Don, I know the title is always a goal for you every year. Now that you've clinched it, you know, and what's the approach that, uh, for these next two games? And what do you tell to the team saying, you know, this is one, but there's still more to get? Yeah, I mean, we, we clinched it, you know, but we clinched a tie. And I think we own the, the, the tiebreaker, so it's the, the win outright. Um, and that's the hard part. Once you know you've uh, at least clinched it, you know, you may have a tendency to let your foot off the gas, but I, I don't think this team, but you got to throw it out there. And that's what we did. This is one of the championships that, that we wanted throughout this, this journey and hope we can get three more. Yeah, Don, you've been promoting it all week, the 18,000 people that made it in here. Just that atmosphere, just what can you say about how much the fan base turned out for you? Uh, I mean, anytime we ask. You know, we don't really ask very often to sell it out, um, but we wanted the electricity in the building. Uh, we knew that we were center stage. Um, <clears throat> uh, as far as women's basketball today at, at 1 o'clock, playing on uh, a channel that we don't usually play on. Um, and I just thought they, as they have for the past eight years, made this place a really hard place to, to win. Um, and they were just excited. I, I think it had a, a, an effect on our team at the beginning of the game. Um, you know, but we recalibrated and found a way to, to gut out a win. Dawn, you've kind of ramped up your Aaliyah Boston campaign for player of the year this week. How fitting was it for her to tie Sylvia's record on a national stage with, with the atmosphere that you had today? Yeah, I mean, I, 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 um, I addressed it when I addressed it, and then I kind of just, as the game got closer, just kind of just let everybody else debate it because, you know, I don't think it's a debate at this point. Um, she's done enough, and she continues to come through. She continues to do what she does, does um, every game this year. And it's, you know, it's only fitting. It's only fitting. Um, she's, she approaches the game the correct way. Uh, she produces, um, and we win. Going off the, uh, the crowd, I don't know if you're aware of this, like before the game, I mean, lines are stretching back to Jersey Mike's. Yeah, and that's how crazy that. it was. Um, when you have senior day and you have players that come in here, Sanaya was just talking about it. She's like, you know, it was a little nerve wracking playing in front of a crowd like that. But when you're going through the recruiting process, you see it, you know what you're going to get into. What is that like for players like Destiny Henderson and little, you know, the seniors that finish this up? that vision that you do pitch to them about, hey, come here, titles, championships, but being able yeah. to play in front of a crowd like that, how special is that? I mean, it, it's super special. Anytime that, uh, you know, you can go into someone's home and say, we we average over 12,000. Um, I think that's just a number when you're sitting in somebody's home and then when they come here and they experience it, um, I mean, you feel good about knowing that, you know, no other fan base looks like looks like ours, no matter, no, you, you can stretch it uh, near or far, um, you know, but for them to, to fill this place up and just kind of, you know, make, you know, make our living room conversations, conversations truth, I mean, I think it's, it's special. I mean, what we've been able to do here, what the fans have been, been able to create here is truly something special. And I just hope, you know, that as we continue to write the history books that the fans are, are, are a real big part of it. Yeah, Coach, um, can you talk a little about just the calm and poise that Aaliyah seems to have no matter what happens? Because it, it seems to me like that, I know that's her personality, but she brings that out on the court in a way that um, it, it seems like then it helps the rest of your team. Whenever things might get tight, she has that poise, if you will. I mean, I think Aaliyah's grown into that. I think probably her first couple of years, um, teams could speed her up and make her play faster than she wants to play or faster than her skill set can handle. Um, just over time, I think people doubling and tripling her made her just relax a little bit in it and not not get sped up. Um, I mean, she sees it. She sees it. I mean, she sees it and she has the skill set to just kind of maneuver through it. You know, sometimes she's... I mean, her, her ball handling has gotten better. Um, her decision making making has gotten better. You know, ability to just score, just figure out a way uh, to score. And a lot of times, uh, 
you know, it's from her rebounding somebody else's shot. And I think she's just basically a really complete player. You can't do what she's done and not be as complete uh, of a player than, than she is right now. Talking about slowing things down a little bit, uh, Sanaya was in here prior and, and talked a little bit about how her comfort level at the point guard position is growing. 20 minutes a day, a lot of it running the show. Uh, how do you gauge her growth as the season has gone on, kind of running the offense and getting those reps that are so important? I think with, with uh, um, Rivers, her her ability to pass, like we we needed that. Like, um, and actually, she didn't really run the show. It was Henny that was running the show. We had we had Rivers on the wing. And I like her passing ability on the wing because it's angled. Um, and she just, I mean, she sees probably more of the court when everything's in front of her. Um, so, I mean, we needed her because we, we, we needed more passing because I thought uh, we were shooting some quick shots. Um, we were dribbling a little bit too much, and she kind of slows it down and kind of sees where she can she can find a mismatch and put people in positions where – they only have to catch and score. They don't have to catch and think, where do I need to maneuver to get this shot up? It's, a, it's an incredible art of, of passing by her. Cora? Hi, Cora Hall with the Knoxville News Sentinel. This was maybe one of the, you know, the most poised games Tennessee has had, like a lot of effort. You know, What do you feel like that says about a team who just lost a player like Jordan Horson who affects every single part of their game? Uh, I mean, w you know, when you when you lose a player as a uh, as important and um, as as Jordan is to their team, um, you rally around that. You, you figure out a way. And I, I thought Tennessee played incredibly well. I thought they were, I thought they were more like themselves um, earlier in the season um, than I, as of late. I thought they were really calculating. I thought they rebounded like they were gang rebounding. Um, I thought they put Burrell in positions where she could be effective. I thought the point guards did a great job at just pushing tempo and keeping us off balance. Um, and that's what you do. That's what you have to do until you're able to get her back. David? Don't know y'all won this one by 14. And throughout the SEC, there's been a few blowouts. But still, it hasn't been as easy as the score has sometimes indicated. How difficult was it you know, to get to this point and say, yes, everybody expects you to win, but you still got to go out there and do it? It's hard. It's hard when you're when you're when you're the hunted, and you're, you're getting everyone's best shot. It's hard. I told our team that like we we sometimes make it look easy. Just you know, I mean that wasn't really a 14 point game. It felt a lot more tight than than that. Um, you know, but you find a way. Uh, I think is I think you have to attribute it to we got a core group of players that have been together for a very long time and. We do take advantage of uh, that fact that they've been together and they know each other. Um, but we also take advantage of having depth. You know, we don't have Camilla in LA today. It would have been hard. It would have been extremely hard with all of our post players um, getting in foul trouble. I, I didn't know. Did y'all know there were 20 fouls called between both teams in the first half? 16 of them were post play post players. 16 out of the 20. So. You get to honor those four seniors in front of 18,000. Just how important have those four been to this program? Uh, I mean, any time that you have seniors and a, a great deal of them, uh, you're, you're the product of their leadership. And you know, for, you know, and I, I'm going to say Henny and and V in particular. Four years ago, we, we, we weren't very good. We weren't a very good basketball team. Um, and we weren't very connected. And I actually <laughs> I actually brought the three of them, and, and E, brought the three of them in. And I just said, just hang, hang in there with me this particular year. It ain't going to feel good. Probably not going to sound good. None of that. Just hang in there with me. Your next three years is gonna feel a lot different. And once we had that, you know, conversation, you know, they knew what was up, and and they hung hung in there with us. I, I wouldn't have been mad if they they would have transferred because uh, it wasn't it wasn't good. It was just we were masking, um, not being a very connected basketball team. 
and I don't, I don't really like that feeling. So we, we fixed it. Corey, go ahead. Sorry, no. What'd you say? <laughs> uh, Don, you mentioned the the foul trouble. Um, how, when you're in the moment, how do you uh, keep encouraging, but also you obviously want to lead and, and Victoria and everyone else to also keep their aggressiveness. How do you walk that line of, of coaching them up in those moments? Um, and, and then, two, when you first saw Leah's hair color after she had changed it, just your just your initial reaction to that? Um, I, I, I thought Camilla played great. Like, we had to have her out there on the floor. She was super aggressive defensively. I mean, she could have shot the ball a little bit more. Um, but they they really take turns. Like if LA was playing well, she would have probably got extended minutes. But because Camilla was playing so well, we just decided to just keep her in. And I told her, just be aggressive. I don't care if you foul. I don't care if you get scored on. Just just keep staying in that mode. Um, and then they know, like, we, we don't have to coach that part of it up during the game. They know when, when their partners are playing well. And they know to just stay ready. Um, and that's what, that's what took place. Um, but we wanted, you know, I wanted V to play well, but it just wasn't in the cards. And fortunately for us, we got the depth at, at the post position. And then the hair, like Aaliyah told me on Saturday that her stylist uh, was mixing the colors and she was gonna let her decide what color. And then somebody told me, they were like, did you see Aaliyah's hair? I was like, no, I didn't see it when I first came. And then when I saw her in the locker room, I'm like, really, Aaliyah? <laughs> like, but she didn't know. Like, she didn't know what color it was going to be. She just let someone else decide that. And uh, it wasn't, you know, she was trying to, there was no subliminal message to Tennessee with it. It was just she allowed somebody else to make this decision. And I know she's learned her lesson. <laughs> <laughs> You had touched on the fouls, obviously a lot of fouls in the post, but did that alter your staff's game plan for the second half, knowing kind of how the game was going to be called through that first 20 minutes? No, I mean, I mean, I mean, all the post players that played had two fouls, so we were all on the you know same uh, plane when it comes to like, Key had two, Puckett had two, uh, all of our play post players had two, so we were just going to play it out. Um, B picked up a, her third really early in the third quarter. And it's usually L.A. that comes in first off the bench. But because Camilla played so well, we decided to go with her. And, I mean, we stuck with it for a long time. And then we finally got Aaliyah a break to put L.A. in. So, no, it doesn't it, – it didn't change besides um, bringing Camilla in a little bit sooner than we usually do. But not because of foul trouble, because of production. Mark, he had 10 blocks today for Tennessee, and she only played 25 minutes due to foul trouble. But how how different is it at attacking Tennessee without her on the court? Without with or with like what difference does she like? What what how different is it to attack? Key. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How different is her defense when she's there and when she's not? I mean, we could score easily, easier, not easy, easier. I mean, she she has a, a real presence. I didn't even realize that she had 10 blocks, but. I mean, I, I felt it in the game. I just didn't know what she actually ended up with. I mean, she's a big presence. Um, she doesn't leave the block. I mean, she doesn't leave the paint a whole lot. So we had to devise plays in which we can pull her out of the paint um, for Aaliyah to get shots or for, for our dribble penetrators uh, to get shots at the rim because, you know, you, you have to scheme around her. Coach, you had uh, 31 offensive boards today. I think that's the most you've had in your time uh, here at South Carolina. Um, can you just talk about how important that is? And I think they're spread out among eight different people. Obviously, Leah leads the way, but your whole team works the offensive boards so well. Yeah, I, I think um, Tennessee was probably, you know, the reason why. I mean, because they, they really gain rebound. They really um, 
Um, it's a special emphasis for them in every aspect of the game, on the free throw line, um, offensive rebounding. Um, so I think we were on high alert. Um, and, you know, I thought everybody pick and chose times in which they needed to crash the boards to go back. And, you know, the only bad part of it is we only got 14 points out of it. So we got to be a little bit more productive when it comes to that. Um, but, you know, we out rebounded by 19. And, you know, I think Jordan presence um, didn't help Tennessee's number because she's a big guard that gets a lot of rebounds. So I was glad we were able to take advantage of that. Thank you, Coach. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.